Now we're going to discuss algebra of complex numbers. Algebra of complex numbers. Algebra of complex numbers, okay? First we will go for the addition. Addition of complex numbers. Addition of complex numbers. Addition of complex numbers, okay? So if we have Z1, that's called alpha 1 plus iota times beta 1. This is the Z1. And we have Z2 here. That is alpha 2 plus iota times beta 2. Then we have to take add. Now we have to take the sum, their sum. Z1 plus Z2. What will be that? That will be alpha 1 plus iota times beta 1. Okay? And plus alpha 2 plus iota times beta 2. So that will be what? Then we have sum, okay? If you take sum, how do you how you have to add the two complex numbers? Real part plus real part, imaginary part plus imaginary part. So you will get alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus iota times beta 1 plus beta 2. So this is your resultant. This is your resultant of addition of the two complex numbers. You will the result you will get from the summation of the two complex numbers. So that means Z1 plus Z2 is called alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus iota times beta 1 plus beta 2. What you, you will conclude here, you will uh, you conclude here that on addition of two complex numbers, on adding two complex numbers, what we will get? We will get the sum of the two uh, real parts and the sum of the two imaginary parts. That's it. Okay? We have to go for example is like this. If we have Z1 is equal to 2 plus iota times 3 and Z2 is equal to what? 4 minus iota times 7. Okay, what you will do? Go for addition, z1 plus z2 will be equal to 2 plus iota times 3, okay, plus 4 minus iota times 7, okay. So now you have to take a real part versus real part, 2 plus 4, okay. Then you can have iota here, iota 3 minus iota 7, okay. So you have 2 plus 4 is what? 6 plus iota is there, so 3 minus 7, okay. So you will get 6, uh, 3 minus 7 is obviously minus 4, you can have minus iota 4. So this is your value. So addition of the two complex numbers. This is how this is how you can add the two complex numbers. So this is all about the addition. So you can add real part plus real part, imaginary part plus imaginary part. Okay. You can't add imaginary and uh, real and real and imaginary. Why? Because um, there is a one more thing in physics you might have heard. That's called principle of homogeneity. From principle of homogeneity, two quantities can be added or subtracted if they have got same dimensions. If I if I just ask you one thing, what is three apples? plus two oranges equal three apples plus two oranges is equal to what you will say five five apples or oranges so you are a little bit confused here so if you just more tricky then you can say that three apples plus two oranges is equal to five fruits okay so but it is not a case here so three apples plus two oranges is equal to three apples plus two oranges you can't add them because apple is one dimension of three oranges of second dimension okay so both, uh, although they are fruits, but three apples and two oranges means three apples and two oranges, or you can say five fruits is there, okay? So you can't add them, or you can have three cars plus two men. What is that equal to? That is equal to five things. Okay, not three, that is three cars plus two uh, men. So you can't add them. So that's called principle of homogeneity. When principle of homogeneity is, for example, three oranges plus two oranges, it becomes five oranges. So likewise, you can't add real plus imaginary, no, real plus real can be added and imaginary plus imaginary can be added. That's the case. So this is the addition of a complex number. So you can add, this is simple. This is not of that kind of a dangerous stuff, no. Typical stuff is not. So you can add mm, complex number like this. You can add now complex numbers. Okay. Another example, you can have, for example, if you just go from, that is iota sum, okay. Z2 is for 2. If you have to add them, what you can do? So this is this is a purely complex number, purely imaginary complex number, and this is called a purely real complex number. If you have to go for summation of this, so you can have two plus iota times seven on it. You will get a new complex number here. Okay? So iota seven as it is, two is as it is. You can't add them other to merge them, uh, one single term. You can't merge them, no, because this is a real one and this is an imaginary one. You can't merge them. So you will get a third one that's two plus iota times seven. Okay? So this is how you can add complex numbers. Now there is a property of addition. Property of addition of complex numbers. Properties of addition. Properties of addition. 
Okay. First property is that they form a commutative to law. That means if you take sum of Z1 plus Z2, that will be equal to Z2 plus Z1. That is called what? Commutative to law. That means if you have two complex numbers, if you just add them, Z1 plus Z2, you will get a result. If you add now Z2 plus Z1, you will get the same result. That means Z1 plus Z2 is going to Z2 plus Z1. That means this law is called commutative to law. So it is, it is also acceptable in real numbers, addition of real numbers. 3 plus 2 is what? That is called 5. And 2 plus 3 is what? That is also called 5. So this is called commutative to 1. Okay? This is called commutativity. Okay? Property of commutativity. So you can have this is called commutative to 1. So they follow the commutative to 1. Complex, addition of complex numbers follow the commutative to 1. Second thing is there. You can put value like Z1 and Z2. You can add them and you can take an example likewise. Okay? So similarly you can have Z1 plus Z2. Okay? Plus Z3 will be equal to Z1 plus Z2 plus Z3. And this is called associative law. Here we have associated a third, um, you can say third complex number. The, the, we were taking the addition of the first two, then we associated a third complex number. That's why this is called an associative law. This is called commutative law. Okay, this is called commutative law. Okay. Commutative. Commutative law, okay? And this is called associative law. Associative law, okay? Commutative law, associative law. Then what you have? Then you have existence of additive identity. Existence of existence of additive. Additive identity. Additive identity. What is that? Additive identity. Four quantities are important quantities in maths for basics. Additive identity. Additive inverse, multiplicative identity, multiplicative inverse. Additive identity is a number which is added to a number, which is added to a given number to get the same number as which was in a given number. Or you can say that. So additive identity is a number which is added to a particular number to get the same number back. For example, what you will add it to 7, you will get the same number 7. You will get the result of 7. What is there you will add to this? That is obviously 0. So you can add 0 to 7, you will get the value 7. That means 0 is here, additive identity, element of additive identity. So additive identity is what? The additive identity is that kind of element which exists. And when we add it to something, we will get the same result back. Okay? So that means, so 7 plus 0 is basically 7. This kind of. Then we have additive inverse. Additive inverse is what, what, what is the number which we add to a particular number in order to neutralize that, in order to vanish that. Vanish what is though? To get the result as 0. So that means... What is the value of uh, how, what to add uh, 3 in order to get the value 0? In order to manage this, in order to neutralize this, okay? In order to nullify it, okay? So what is that? The value is at that time that is minus 3. You will add 3 plus of minus 3. You will get what? 3 plus 3 minus 3 is 0. So that means additive inverse is nothing but it is a negative of a number. Additive identity is a number which is added to a particular number in order to get the same result. Additive inverse is that kind of a number which is added to a particular number in order to neutralize that, in order to get the value as zero. Okay? So that is called additive identity as additive inverse. And here is a multiplicative identity and multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative identity, like additive identity. Here is a multiplicative identity. Additive identity means to add, multiplicative identity is means to multiply. What we will multiply to a particular number to get the same number back? For example, what to multiply eight? In order to get the value as 8, in order to get the value as 8, obviously there is a 1. So if you just multiply 1 into, uh, with 8, you will get the value 8. So that means 1 is what? It is called a multiplicative identity, okay? So likewise, we have multiplicative inverse. What is the multiplicative inverse? What to multiply a particular number in order to, in, in order to get the result as 1, in order to get the result as 1. For example, what you should multiply to a 9 in order to get the result as 1. What to multiply 9? In order to get the result as 1. 9 to multiply kya karoge so that you will get a value result as 1. That is basically 1 upon 9. So 9 and 9 will be cancelled out so that means you will get the result as 1. So that means 1 upon 9 is the multiplicative inverse of 9. And multiple that uh, in the first case we discussed multiplicate uh, additive inverse. Additive inverse is negative of a number, multiplicative inverse is the reciprocal of a number. That's it. Okay. Now you, you I think you have gone to I uh, have understood four concepts. Additive identity, additive inverse, multiplicative identity, multiplicative inverse. So additive identity is that kind of a number which is added to a particular number in order to get the result a same result back. Okay? And additive inverse is that kind of a number which is added to a number in order to neutralize that thing, in order to get the result as zero. And the multiplicative identity is that kind of a number which is multiplied by a number in order to get the result as same or result back result uh, okay, result back. Okay? 
So multiplicative uh, inverse is that kind of a number which is multiplied by a number in order to get the result as 1. Okay, so additive inverse is negative of a number, and multiplicative inverse is a reciprocal of a number. That's it, okay. So these are the concepts regarding the four things. Okay, so here existence of additive identity. So obviously, what we add, as if z is a complex number, what we should add to it in order to get the result as z back? Obviously, that is zero complex number here. That is called a zero complex number. So you will get the value as z. So zero complex number is, you can have, it is alpha plus iota times beta, then you have zero complex number like this, that is equal to, you can have zero plus iota times zero. So you will get what? Z. So this is a zero complex number. So zero complex number is here additive element. Okay. So you can have at zero is additive in uh, identity of what z. Additive identity of z is what here zero. Okay. So this zero is called what additive element. Okay. Additive identity element. Okay. This identity element. So additive you know, property is clear versus commutative property. Then associative property. Then the existence of additive in, uh, identity. Now we will just the existence of additive inverse. Existence of additive. Inverse. Existence of existence of attitude inverse. Existence of attitude inverse. Okay. Now existence of attitude inverse. What we should add to a number in order to in order to get the result as zero complex number. Obviously that will be what that will be negative of a z. So we'll have z plus negative times z will get the value zero. So that is what is z? If z is alpha plus iota times beta, then negative z will be obviously what? Then you get minus alpha minus iota times beta. Okay? We just we just going to neutralize it. Alpha and alpha will cancel out. Beta and beta will be iota and beta will be cancel out. You will get the value as zero. So that means what? So additive inverse of complex number is what? The negative it's number uh, opposite. Uh, you can see the negative of that complex number. If z, if you have to find, if anybody will ask you. Now, what is the attitude inverse of uh, 3 plus iota times 7? You can have minus 3 minus iota times 7. Okay, that's negative of enough. If anybody will ask you, minus 2 plus iota times 8, find the complex, find the attitude inverse of this complex number. If z is equal to minus 2 plus iota times 9, okay, find the attitude inverse of this complex number. Attitude inverse is nothing but that will be equal to plus 2 minus iota times 9. Okay, that's a negative of a number. Minus, uh, plus 2 minus uh, iota times 9. Okay, remember this once for all. Okay, so these were basic regarding the addition of complex numbers. Addition of complex. Commutative law we understood. Associative law we understood. Uh, and if you existence of additive numbers, we understood. Uh, existence of additive identity we understood. Okay, now we will go for the next section that is subtraction of. Subtraction of complex numbers. Subtraction of complex numbers. And if you talk about the subtraction of complex numbers, okay. So that means if z1 we have alpha plus iota times beta, okay, uh, or alpha 1 beta 1, okay, so z2 is called what? Alpha 2 plus iota times beta 2, okay, this, these are the two complex numbers, then we have to subtract them, obviously subtract, subtraction you can write z, z1 plus z2, and obviously subtraction is nothing but you can write it as an addition minus, z1 plus minus times z2, okay, so this is basically, subtraction is basically summation of a one complex number and the, uh, and the, Rest in, in uh, negative of a uh, second number, negative of a second number. This is this second number is uh, second complex number is z2 and it's negative number. You just add the negative of a second number with the first one, you add them, you will get the subtraction of the two complex numbers. Okay, well, so you will get the result here. That will be alpha plus iota times beta 1. Okay, so then what we have, we have plus times. We just take the negative of a second complex number, that is minus alpha 2 minus iota times beta 2. Okay, and the final result you will get. Alpha 1 minus alpha 2, okay, plus iota times beta 1 minus beta 2, okay, this is z1 minus z2. So, likewise, you have in addition, addition of the two real parts, real part plus real, real part, minus part plus minus part. Likewise, we have here is subtraction of uh, real part minus real part, minus part minus minus part. That is the thing here, okay, you will get so. This was a subtraction of a complex number. Obviously, it is not going to follow a community to do it. Why? We just take 5 minus 2, what is that? 3. We just 2 minus 5, what is that? Minus 3. So they are not equal, okay? So this doesn't follow community law. And obviously, it is not going to follow associative law as well, okay? This is a subtraction of complex numbers. We discussed the addition of complex numbers. We discussed the subtraction of complex numbers, okay? So, okay. Now we'll what? We'll go for. Multiplication of complex numbers. Multiplication of complex numbers. Multiplication of complex numbers. 
multiplication of complex numbers. Okay, multiplication of complex numbers. How to multiply two complex numbers? If we have z1, that's alpha 1 plus iota times beta 1, and we have z2, that's what alpha 2 plus iota times beta 2. These are the two complex numbers we have. Okay, if we have to multiply them, how we are going to multiply? That's z1 dot z2. Okay, so that means alpha 1 plus iota times beta 2. Okay, into alpha 2 plus iota times beta 2, obviously. Okay, this is the simple mathematics here. Okay? This is, if you just multiply it, then alpha 1, alpha 2. Alpha 1, alpha 2, and we have plus iota times alpha 2, beta, uh, alpha 1, sorry, alpha 1, beta 2. Okay, then you will just multiply with this. This is iota times beta 2, alpha 2. Okay, so then what we have? Then we have iota square. Iota, iota, is iota square, that is beta 1 beta 2 okay you will get this value so in final nutshell you will get alpha 1 alpha 2 okay plus this iota is common there you can take a common alpha 1 beta 2 plus beta 2 okay then you will get what beta 2 alpha 1 okay it must be here iota times okay it's uh, iota times beta you just multiply it iota times beta 1 into alpha 2, okay, this is alpha 1, alpha 2, okay, then we have iota times alpha 1, beta 2, okay, then we have what, iota times beta 1, iota times um, beta 1, this is beta 1 over here, okay, beta 1, this iota times beta 1, alpha 2, okay, then we have plus iota, iota square, that's beta 1, beta 2, okay, so you will have here, uh, iota is common, alpha 1, beta 2, plus you will have beta 1, alpha 2, okay, so then what we have, then we have what, iota square is what, it's minus 1, and you have beta 1, beta 2, okay, so naturally we'll get alpha 1, alpha 2, minus beta 1, beta 2, okay, then the real parts, these two are real parts, imaginary one is what, this is alpha 1, beta 2, plus beta 1, alpha 2, okay, so this is the multiplication of two numbers, z1 and z2, you just, if you just if you are going to generalize this thing, how what you will in generalization what you will get? In generalization you will get that this is this complex number is basically multiplication is what? This is the real part of first and the real part of first second minus the real part of uh, imaginary part of first and imaginary part of second iota times real part of first okay imaginary part of second plus imaginary part of second real part of uh, second okay many part of first and real part of second okay you can generalize it like this and um, or you can write in generalized manner i can have here so z1 dot z2 is what first one is what this is real part of first one first complex number and this is what this is a real part of second complex number minus this is what imaginary part of first complex number okay this is imaginary part of second complex number okay so you will have like this this will be one Thing, okay, then we have iota here, then what we have, then we have a real part of first and imaginary part of second. Imaginary part of second. Then we have plus sign over there, then we have imaginary part of second, okay, plus real part of first, like this. Okay, iota means alpha, alpha 1 is what? Alpha 1 is there, the real part of first. Okay, that is the imaginary part of second, then we have imaginary part of second, and the uh, real part of first. This is the real part of first, real part of second minus imaginary part of first, imaginary part of second plus every time. Real part of first, imaginary part of second plus imaginary part of first, real part of second. Okay? So you will have like this. So this is the multiplication of a complex numbers. Okay? Uh, and likewise, uh, if you just take the properties of a multiplication of a complex numbers. Okay?
multiplication of a complex so property is now. Property is of multiplication. Multiplication of complex numbers. Okay. What is that first property? First of all, they also obey commutative law. That is Z1 dot Z2. Z1 dot Z2 is equal to Z2 dot Z1. Okay. This is the one. So just take the multiplication of the two complex numbers. First and second, second and first, you will get the same result. Okay, commutative law. That is called as the commutative law. Commutative law. And second, you have what? Commutative law, likewise, you have a strict law. Z1 dot Z2. Okay. Dot Z3. Is equal to what? Z1 dot Z2 dot Z3. Okay. You will follow the associative law. Associative law. Okay. Likewise, we have here what? Existence of multiplicative identity. There was an additive identity here, multiplicative identity. Existence of. Existence of multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. We just go for the existence of multiplicative identity. Multiplicative identity. Multi. Multiplicative identity. Identity. Multiplicative of identity. So what is that? What we should multiply to a complex number in order to get the same result. That is obviously one. So you will have z into one. You will get the z. So z is this one is called a complex number. One complex number. So z into complex number. So you will have z into one plus iota times one. Iota times zero. Okay. This is the complex number here. 1 plus iota times 0 multiply by okay so this is basically what so you will get what z into what is that 1 plus iota times this is 1 so you will get the value as 1 so 1 is the multiplicative identity here so 1 is complex number okay so 1 plus iota times 0 divided by 1 is also complex number as I have already told you all real numbers are complex in nature okay then we have existence of additive in, uh, existence of multiplicative Existence of multiplicative inverse. What is multiplicative inverse? That is basically the reciprocal of a number. Existence of existence of multiplicative inverse. Existence of multiplicative inverse. What is that? Existence of multiplicative inverse is what? Existence of multiplicative inverse is like mm, you have z is a complex number okay then what we multiply to a complex number in order to get the result as one in order to get the result as one okay so this z1 is called the so this z1 is basically called the z in over this is one upon z okay so this is called the reciprocal of a complex number so z1 is nothing but the z in over one upon z okay so this you will get what you will get the value of a complex number here so Reciprocal of a complex number. If we have z, then we will 1 upon z. z, z will cancel out, obviously that will be the uh, result will be as 1. So you have to find the value of 0. You can write. Okay? So if you have, uh, for example, z is a complex number, z is like this 3 plus iota times 4. Okay? So this is a complex number. If we have to find the reciprocal of this complex number, that, that will be what? Now, it is multiplicative universe. Reciprocal means multiplicative universe. So multiplicative universe will be called multiplicative inverse of z will be equal to z inverse which will be 1 upon z okay so which will be equal to 1 upon what is z plus 3 times iota 4 okay we just go for what i will go for 3 plus iota times 4 upon 3 minus iota times 4 okay okay i can have like this okay the rationalizing the denominator you can have so what we get you will get 3 minus iota times 4 upon this is a plus b into a minus b that is a square minus b square okay so you will get what? You will get that's 3 minus iota times 4 and you will get this is 9 and iota square you know that's called a minus 1 and minus 7 is plus and 4 is 16. So you will get what? 3 minus iota times 4 upon what is 9 plus 16 that's called 25. So you will get what? 3 upon 25 minus iota times 4 upon 25. So this will be the what? This will be z inverse. So this will be the reciprocal of a complex number. If you just multiply with it z you will get the result as 1. Obviously you will get the result as 1. That's it. Or verification you can have here. You can verify here. Verification will have z dot z inverse. Is what? What is z? Z is three plus iota times four. Okay. What is z inverse? Z inverse is three upon twenty-five minus iota times four upon twenty-five. Okay. So we'll get what? That is three into this is three into nine upon twenty-five. Okay. 
then we have multiplied with iota times 3, this 12 upon 25, okay? So then you have to multiply with this um, plus iota times 12 upon 25, okay? Then you will what? Minus iota square, okay? That is 16 upon 25, okay? So you will get what? You will get 9 upon 25, okay? Like this. This is the proof running over here, okay? This is 12 upon 25, 12 upon 25, minus iota plus iota. This we cancel out with 9 upon 25. This iota square is plus. We have plus here, okay? So minus 1, minus minus will be plus. So 16 upon 25, okay? What you will get is 9 plus 16 upon 25. So you will get 25 upon 25, which is equal to 1, okay? So that is the proof you will get, okay? You can have. This is the existence of a multiplicative universe. So we talk about that um, today. We discussed the definition of a complex numbers. Then we uh, discussed it. Uh, Power of an iota, then we discuss the square root of a negative quantity, then we discuss algebra of a complex numbers, addition of complex numbers, and the property of addition, subtraction of complex numbers, multiplication of complex numbers, and the properties of a multiplication. Uh, then we are now we are going to discuss now division of complex numbers. Division of complex numbers. Division of complex numbers, okay. Division of complex numbers. Division of complex numbers. Now, if you talk about the division of complex numbers, that means if we have z1 and z2. So, you just um, take a look of this. You can write z2, this is z2 minus 1, okay? You can write like this. And you can write z1, and the, what is z here? This. So, you, this one, uh, z2 minus 1, you can write upon z2, okay? So then z1 into 1 upon z2, this is nothing but division of two complex numbers, is nothing but this is a multiplication of a one complex number and with it is multiplicative inverse or reciprocal of another complex number. That is what we call a division. It's multiplication of first complex number with the uh, reciprocal of a second complex number. That's it. That's, that's what we call what? Mm, division of two complex numbers. So divide, you can take, for example, if we have Z1 is mm, like 2 plus iota times 3, and Z2 we have 1 plus 2 times iota times 2, okay? And then we will get what? We will have Z1 upon Z2, so we will get 2 plus iota times 3 upon 1 plus iota times 2, okay? So this is a complex number. So you have to find that, in, you have to go, uh, go for the div or division of this complex number. How you can go? We will go for rationalizing the number iota times 2 divided 1 minus iota times 2, okay? So this will be what? This will be 2 into that's 2 plus iota times 3 into, we will have 1 minus iota times 2, okay, upon, we will get a plus b into a minus b is a square minus b square, okay. So, likewise, you will get what? You will get 2 into that's 2, you will get that's minus iota times 4, then you will have what? Plus iota times 3, okay, then you will have what? Minus iota square 6, okay. So, upon, you will get what? This is 1, this is minus of minus will be, this is minus 2 iota 2, okay. So you will have iota square is minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 will become plus and 2 plus square is what 4, okay? So you will have what? You will have value here. So this is iota square is a minus minus is plus 6 and plus 2 is what? 8 you will get and you will have minus iota plus 3 is equal to minus iota, okay? And you will have 4 plus 3 is what? 5. And you will have 8 upon 5 minus iota times 1 upon 8. You will have this result, okay? Or 5, 5 is it, sorry. Is the part. So this is the division of two complex. On dividing these two complex numbers, we will get the value as 8 upon 5 minus uh, iota times 1 upon 5. This will be the result of division of the two complex numbers. So this is all about division of complex numbers. In the second lecture, we will be discussing modulus of a complex number and conjugate of a complex number.